Hi, welcome to Best Stories. I'm so glad you could join us. This is the Adventures of Packy the Rat Podcast. Episode 15, Clara Tells the Barn Animals a Story. Tonight was a very unusual night. All seven children were already in bed, and they were as quiet as a mouse, not making a sound. Now, this does not happen often, but on this particular night, everyone had settled into their beds and they were waiting for their story. And when their mom came into their room, she whispered, Lights out! It's time to listen to our next story about the adventures of Packy the Rat. Ginger was busy tidying up her nest. She was ordering the goslings to clean up this and straighten up that. She did not want a thing out of place. From a distance, Packy was watching Ginger and her goslings flutter around. He was wondering what all the hustle and bustle was all about. Until little Jeffrey rushed up to him with a shiny key hanging on a red ribbon that he hung around his neck. Oh, that's cool. Where did you find it? said Packy. Just in a pile of straw in our nest, honked little Jeffrey. I wonder what it belongs to, said Packy. I have no idea. We were just cleaning up the nest and I found it, honked little Jeffrey. Hmm, maybe we can figure it out if we keep cleaning, said Packy. So Packy started helping little Jeffrey with cleaning up the nest. Now Ginger was very happy for the extra help. Oh, thank you for your help, Packy. We need all the help we can get, honked Ginger. Why, said Packy. Why are we cleaning up your nest and sweeping it up? Good heavens, I've told you so many times, Packy. Soon the goslings and I will be flying south. We need everything in order before we go. Oh, right, said Packy, kind of sadly. Little Jeffrey would be leaving soon and that made him sad. He looked over at little Jeffrey with that shiny key hanging around his neck. Little Jeffrey had been a lot of fun. But Ginger did not have time to let anyone get sentimental. There was work to do. She honked, sweep, sweep, come on, let's sweep all the straw and get it cleaned up. Ginger had them sweep and sweep and sweep until everything was clean. And by the time they cleared out all the feathers and all the straw, they discovered there was something hidden underneath all of that. Then Packy uncovered something sharp. No one was quite certain what they had discovered. That's definitely not part of my nest, said Ginger. Packy dug some more and he found that the sharp edge was part of a claw that belonged to a very large paw. And once they had fully uncovered it, they were all a little shocked and a little scared at what they found. And believe me, it was nothing that they would have imagined. Packy, Ginger, and her goslings could not believe it. It's so big, said Packy. It's scary, said little Jeffrey. Good heavens, said Ginger. It's a bear! Uh, It's a bear! Hiss! Hiss! A bear, said Priscilla. Where? Where? Right here, said Packy. And Packy pointed to the floor where a great big brown bear rug lay flat on the barn floor. Oh my, it looks so real, squealed Priscilla. That's because it was, mooed Clara. That's odious bear. It has been here ever since I've been here. The farmhands used to sit around on the old bear rug and tell terrifying stories about the great odious bear. I guess they finally must have forgotten that that bear rug was there and they just covered it up with layers and layers of straw, mooed Clara. What do you mean story, said Priscilla. Oh my, said Clara, I've heard so many stories about odious the bear. Many are about how they chased the great odious bear away. 
Do you remember any of the stories, honked little Jeffrey? Yes, tell us one of the stories. Tell us, tell us, tell us, bleated the lamb twins. Oh, my, I suppose I do, said Clara. Oh, a cow never forgets things. Clara moved on to the big bear rug and sat down. Ginger and her goslings, Lily and the lamb twins, Oliver, Packy and Priscilla all huddled onto the rug to listen to the story. Oh, my, mood Clara. I, I remember one story. It was during a long, cold winter when the farmhands were sitting around on this rug and told a tale about the great, odious bear. How did it go now? Oh, yes, I remember. The farmhands told the story of one time when this farm was still raising bees on the farm. At that time, this farm was known as one of the biggest beekeepers in the county with a huge supply of honey. Now, I believe Simon was the farmhand telling the story at the time. His story went like this. I had just finished sowing the field. All day long, I had been in the field. Then I was told that tonight I needed to build a fire and keep the fire going all night long. The farm down the road said they had sighted odious bear. And they were warning all the nearby farms that odious bear had just woken up after the long cold winter and he was hungry. I was very worried because it was only the beginning of spring. There was not much food available yet to survive the bear's terrible hunger. And odious bear is so big he'd be exceptionally hungry. And if he got close enough to the farm we'd be in great danger. "'Cause Odious Bear is the biggest bear known to this side of the Mississippi. "'Now, Odious Bear was feared by everyone. "'The animals in the barn were jittery at the thought of Odious Bear coming near the farm. "'I was really worried because the bee's honey might draw Odious Bear near the farm. "'So I gathered lots of wood to keep the fire burning. "'I had enough wood to last us well through the night.' I knew how important it was that the fire did not go out, and if it did, the whole farm would be in danger. I built the biggest bonfire anyone had ever seen. The flames went up so high, it looked like the flames reached the stars in the sky. In fact, I made the fire so big, I had to back away because it was so hot. Since the fire was burning so big and so bright, I decided I could take a little rest. So I fell asleep as the fire burned. After a bit, I woke and I found the fire was nearly out. So I jumped up and I checked on the animals in the barn and I checked on the hens and the roosters in their houses and then I ran to the beehive to make sure that it had not been disturbed. <gasps> Luckily, nothing had been disturbed and everyone in the barn was sound asleep and there was no sighting of the great odious bear. So I quickly added more wood to the fire, and this time I did not make the fire so big. Once the fire started burning again, I sat down close to the fire, and I was determined I was going to stay awake and keep watch of the fire. As I sat watching the fire, my eyes grew heavy, and I fell asleep again. This time I woke, I was not so lucky. I saw the great odious bear's shadow by the dim-lit fire that was still burning. I quickly threw on as many logs of wood as I could onto the fire, as, I, as many as I could grab, and then I stoked the fire as fast as I could. But the great odious bear was getting close. He was as close to me as I am sitting next to you, not more than ten feet away. As the great bear approached, the fire took off and got going again just in time, and the flames burst into the air, sending odious bear running back to where he came from. I quickly checked on the animals and the beehive again, and everything was fine. And this time, when I sat back down by the fire, I could see the sun started to rise in the horizon. Oh, I was never so happy to see the sun rise, and I was even happy to go back into the field and continue sowing my field again. Huh. Oh. And that was one of the stories of Great Odious Bear, Clara said. 
Clara was so good at telling stories, everyone wanted another story. But then there was a scratching at the barn door. Now, I'm not sure if the story of Odious Bear had spooked the friends a little, but they heard the scratch, scratch sound, and immediately all of the animals, Clara, Oliver, Ginger, the goslings, Packy, Priscilla, all dove under the rug of the great Odious Bear and hid. Good heavens, Hunk Ginger, what do you think that scratching noise is? I don't know, said Packy, but I think it stopped. The friends waited a few more minutes and decided that they must have been spooked. And there was nothing at the door and there was no more sounds. So they came out from under the bear rug. But then they heard the noise again. They almost dove under the rug again. But as Packy was diving under the rug, he thought he heard his name. Wait, wait, wait. Hold on, everyone, said Packy. I, I think I heard my name. And they all listened again, and there it was. Pecky! Pecky! It was only Buddy. The barn doors had slammed shut, and he had a mouthful of some amazing sweet flowers, and he needed someone to open the barn doors for him. The friends felt a little silly for being so scared before they tried to find out what the noise really was. Clara's story was so good, they just got spooked about all the talk about odious bear. When now when Buddy saw the big scary rug, he dropped his flowers and dove into the pile of hay to hide. Packy reassured Buddy that he was safe. They had found the rug under all the straw from Ginger's nest. Yes, yes, said Ginger. This big, odious bear rug has been under my nest this whole time. Who knew? But you are safe, dear Buddy, honked Ginger. Buddy came out from the hay feeling a little silly, too. But everyone understood because they also had been scared. Ginger honked to her friends. Well, this has been enough silliness and nonsense for today. The goslings and I need to go for our practice flight. And off they went. But now, it wasn't too long before Ginger came flying back, all alone and very flustered. Oh my, oh my, oh my dear, help, 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 help! What is it? exclaimed Oliver. Why are you so upset? Oh, good heavens, I think the little goslings... We're still a little spooked from our story. They heard the hollowing of some wolves, and they fluttered into the forest while we were flying, and I, I seem to have lost sight of them. It's going to be getting dark, and now they're all alone in the forest. Oh, no! Oh, no! Oh, well, gosh, said Henry, that is a little scary. Well, and I don't think it's safe for all of us to go into the forest now. It'll be dark soon. Yeah. We're not big like that great odious bear, grunted Oliver. Oh, what are we going to do? I need to save my babies, honked Ginger. We'll think of something, said Priscilla. Yes, yeah, said, per- said Packy. I-, I might have an idea. If it's, it's not safe for us to go into the forest as ourselves, but if we hide under the bear rug and disguise ourselves as a bear, we could go safely into the forest as a group. To find the goslings. Oh, yes, that might work, agreed Oliver with a grunt. Ginger looked at the bear rug and said, Oh, you want me to go into the forest under that rug? Oh, good heavens, that sounds ridiculous. Oh, come on, Ginger, said Packy. Do you want to find your goslings or not? Yes, yes, uh, said Ginger. I do. Yes, of course I do. But Ginger said, Buddy, hurry up. It will be getting dark soon. So all of the barn animals got under the bear rug. Henry was placed at the front to be the bear's head, and Clara was in the back of the bear rug, and while everyone else filled in the middle of the bear. And there they all stood, under the great big bear rug of odious bear. I am not so sure they looked like a bear, but they are all under the rug, and ready to go find the poor, spooked goslings. But now the problem was trying to get out of the barn doors or even to move at all. They were crashing and bumping and stepping all over each other. And they all finally fell over with the great odious bear rug covering them like a blanket. In a muffled voice, Ginger honked, Good heavens, this is a disaster. This won't work. 
Oh, come on, said Priscilla. We just need to work together. Yes, precisely, said Oliver. We need to step in time with each other. What does that mean, said Packy, because I think everyone was already stepping all over me. Oh, I get it, said Priscilla, like a rhythm or a marching. One, two, one, two. Priscilla shouted, all we need to do is walk at the same time, and when I say one, we move our right foot, and when I say two, we move our left foot. We can move together at the same pace. So all together now, one, two, one, two. Priscilla kept up the counting rhythm, and eventually the great odious bear rug, with all the barn animals underneath, made their way out of the barn doors, and they were heading toward the forest. Awkwardly, the group stumbled along under the great odious bear rug. It was starting to get dark, and they knew they didn't have a lot of time to find the goslings. They heard the wolves howl in the distance. Ginger knew her goslings must be so scared, and she was getting nervous that they would never find her babies. Together they weaved in and around the trees and bushes. No one found or heard anything to help find the goslings. And then Ginger started shouting, Little Jeffrey! Little goslings! Where are you? Honk! 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 Oh, we need to think of something else. This is not working. What are we going to do? Hiss! 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 It's almost dark, honked Ginger. The friends had to admit, although they felt safe under the great odious bear rug, no one was sure how they would find the goslings. I thought once we were in the forest, they would see us, said Packy. But either they don't see us, or we're not close to where they're hiding, Packy sighed. And as Packy was trying to keep up the rhythm, one, two, one, two, he stubbed his paw on something and shouted, Ouch! Hold on, everyone, I hit my paw on something. Packy bent down to check out what his paw stumbled on, and he shouted, Hey, they may be close. We, we're going the right way. This is little Jeffrey's shiny key with the red ribbon. He must have dropped it. Packy peeked out from under the bear rug, and he spotted little Jeffrey up in the tree. I see them. I see them. They're in that big tree over to the right. So the barn animals counted one, two, one, two, as they made their way over to the tree. The barn animals were all trying to yell and squawk and grunt and bleat to the goslings, but it wasn't until they heard Ginger honk, Good heavens, little goslings, it is us. Get down here so we can go home. The goslings heard their mama, and they realized that was not a real bear. They quickly flew under the bear rug, and together the barn animals made their way back to the barn. It was not exactly a smooth or easy walk, but they got back to the barn. They spread out the bear rug on the barn floor, and they all collapsed. They were so tired. They all huddled together, and they just wanted to go to sleep. Everything was really quiet and very still. Until little Jeffrey honked. Clara, what happened to the beehive? Why isn't it on the farm anymore? Clara mooed. Oh, my! Well, I believe the beehive got so big, and there were too many bees, on, and they were stinging all the farm animals. The farmer sold them to another bee farm. Oh, said little Jeffrey, and everything was quiet again. Little Jeffrey was about to honk another question, but all the barn animals shouted, Go to sleep, little Jeffrey! And that is the end of our podcast stories about the adventures of Packy the Rat. And that does end our story for today. But before we go, did you know cows have the best memory of all the farm animals? Clara really entertained her friends with the story of the great odious bear. I'm sure glad they found the goslings. Thanks for listening to this adventure of Packy the Rat Podcast by Best Stories.